Can you believe that I shot this handheld while running with my Sony mirrorless camera? Today, I want to take a look at Sony Catalyst Browse and see how smooth some of the shots I can get while going handheld. Share some prime situations that I would find this very useful and also some drawbacks while using this stabilization method. For those of you who don't know what Catalyst Browse is, it's a software where you can take the gyro metadata from some of Sony's newer cameras like the Sony a7 IV, a7S III, or the ZV-E1 and use it to reframe your shot to neutralize all the jitter and shakes inside the movement. And to be clear, this is a much more advanced form of post stabilization than say, warp stabilizer with much more accuracy. And just to quickly break down how you can quickly use it, all you need to do is first download Catalyst Browse, which is a free product. Once you have it installed, open it up and locate your Sony footage in the device tabs. Once you have selected your folder with your Sony footage, you should see these little icons on the top right of your clip, which means that you have gyro metadata to work with. Right click and then click on stabilize clip. And from here, you can manually adjust how much stabilization you want inside of your clip. But keep in mind that the more you apply, the more it'll crop into your footage. After you have selected something that you're happy with, hit analyze and then hit this export button on the very top right. Select where you would like to export it and then just hit export. So now I shot this footage while sprinting handheld and while I was playing it back, it honestly looked like there was like an earthquake going on. Like I'm not even kidding. It was so shaky that I did not think that Catalyst Browse could smooth it out. But the before and after absolutely blew me away and it also blew away Shy. To go from earthquake footage into buttery smooth gimbal like shots is pretty insane. I always knew driver stabilization from Catalyst Browse was good but like not this good so now that begs the question can you replace your gimbal and can you now just go handheld for all of your shots and that's sort of a complicated question but i think yes and no depending on your situation there are still some things that you have to consider when you do go with gyro stabilization and that is that you have to crank your shutter speed up really high to get rid of all the motion blur because when you have motion blur present, the gyro stabilization will still stabilize your footage, but you'll get these motion blur pulses, which doesn't really look that good. And you have to keep in mind, it doesn't remove motion blur. It just stabilizes your footage. So for the best results, you should always go with a really high shutter speed. I was around like one over 250 and anywhere around that or higher, I think is more than enough to eliminate all that motion blur. Now, this could be a pretty big deal breaker for some of you guys who film a lot of fast moving subjects because I think that's when motion blur looks really good. But for more slower movements, slower shots where motion blur is hardly noticeable, like for example, a lot of my portrait video B-roll that I like to shoot. In my opinion, I think the gyro stabilization would make much more sense because there really isn't that much motion blur visible anyways. Another thing that you have to consider is that this is another step in the post-production and stabilizing the footage inside Catalyst Browse can take pretty long depending on how much footage that you're working with. On my Ferrari 488 shoot that I did a while back, I just stabilized over 30 plus different clips which took over five hours just to render out. And that's a lot of time that could interfere with deadlines or just really slow down your overall output of content. And not to mention, unless you pay for the premium version of Catalyst Browse, which is called Catalyst Prepare, you won't be able to batch export your videos. Meaning if if you're using the free version Catalyst Browse, you'll have to export it one by one, which can be really annoying. Another really annoying problem that I ran into while using Catalyst Browse was when I was stabilizing my footage, I could not see the final stabilized clip until I actually had fully exported it out. This is really annoying because I won't know how much stabilization I should add until I have finally exported it. If you guys have a solution, please let me know. I don't know, for some reason, I just cannot see the stabilized version inside of my Catalyst Browse. Overall, I think Catalyst Browse could just use some improvements to make it a little more easy to work with and just a little less glitchy. Now to answer the question of can you replace your gimbal with the stabilization method and go fully handheld? Yes, you can, but you are adding a lot of additional steps into your post-production, which could be a big deal breaker for some of you guys. Now, besides being able to exclude my gimbal from my backpack, reducing the weight and time it takes to balance for both vertical and horizontal setups, because that's what I'm doing a lot nowadays. I'm filming both vertical and horizontal. I have to say that is very valuable to basically just exclude the gimbal and to just go all handheld. That really speeds up my workflow while I'm out to run and gun filming. But another really important aspect about this gyro stabilization for me is that I'm able to get much more smoother car B-roll, mainly the speed ramp style B-roll that I've been filming a lot on Instagram Reels. 
Even with a gimbal and warp stabilizer, I still get pretty shaky footage and sometimes I'm not able to get that like ultra smooth speed ramp effect. This is something that I've been trying to master for a while and no matter how smooth I try to walk or how well balanced my gimbal is, I still end up with some shake in my footage. It's not perfect. And I think the main reason is because when you film car content with a gimbal, it's always like in a really awkward position that make handling your gimbal just a little bit more challenging. Like for example, you have to get really low for some certain cars and it just makes holding that gimbal and getting like accurate smooth shots a lot more challenging. But using that gyro stabilization on top of my gimbal added that perfect smoothness that I was looking for and really kind of smoothed out all the kinks and bumps, allowing me to have more room for error and still giving me that ultra smooth B-roll. So now weighing out the pros and cons for me specifically, I think it's actually worth it for me when I am shooting my car speed ramp videos because that's like the only way that I found that allows me to get that ultra smooth look. And I think a lot of you guys who shoot car content understand that as well. Even when shooting with a gimbal, it still can be pretty hard to make that shot perfect, especially when you're speed ramping it and adding this extra layer of stabilization with gyro stabilization really just smooths it all out and gives you that ultra smooth look but something i really want to test next is if i could totally ditch my gimbal and try shooting handheld for my car speed ramp videos and see if that might be better because like i mentioned before sometimes working with a gimbal is actually much more complicated because of how awkward of an angle that you need to go in to kind of get the shot so I don't know, maybe going handheld might be a little bit easier to get those certain shots. And uh, with the gyro stabilization anyways, it comes out super smooth, like I demonstrated in the first clips of shot running. It's pretty crazy how it can go from that shaky to literally gimbal-like footage. It's, it's pretty mind-blowing. So ultimately, I think it makes sense for some situations, but it really depends on what you're shooting and your style of content. Some of you guys might need that motion blur depending on your shoots, so callous brows is out of the question. And some of you guys might not care about motion blur and you guys might value the added flexibility of going handheld and not having to worry about carrying and balancing your gimbal. But at the end of the day, it's really nice to know that if you are ever in a pinch and you somehow forgot your gimbal and you really need buttery smooth gimbal shots, you can always get that result as long as you have one of Sony's newer cameras that record that gyro meta data and that in itself is so powerful now something that i really love to see in the future is for sony to implement the gyro stabilization internally for example like on the new iphone 14's pro active stabilization mode it crops in just a little bit but essentially the iphone 14 pro is applying additional gyro stabilization in real time while recording i would absolutely love to see that implemented into some of Sony's newer cameras in the future because that would absolutely remove all the additional post-production inside Catalyst Browse that you would need to do. And also it will just be easier for you to compose and frame your shots because you're no longer kind of guessing how much it's gonna crop into your clip after you've stabilized it inside Catalyst Browse. I feel like that's something realistic that they can easily add with some sort of firmware update or just adding it inside their processor in some of their newer cameras that they might release down the line. And I think the day that they add that, I think a lot of people are probably going to go without a gimbal. Let me know what your thoughts are about Catalyst Browse. If you use it or if you don't, definitely would love to hear your guys' opinion on this. Today's video is sponsored by me. Make sure to check out my new Super 8mm Light Leak digital product. I scanned real Super 8mm Kodak film to create these authentic light leaks, and I'm really proud of how they came out. If you guys like that film light leak effect and you want to get the same look in your videos, then make sure to check out the link down below in the description. It really means a lot if you guys go check it out and support. Do not forget to drop a like in this video video and subscribe if you have not already and with that being said I will see you guys in the next one later